filming um, a kind of, you know, weird story about sex and, and botanical gardens. Mostly about Jimmy Johnson. Well, mostly about me. This is called male teenage obnoxious crap. How about that for a name for it? That's what that is. That is defacing public property. Magic marker that stains and can never get out. Some stupid teenage male destroyed the stone. Who is Jimmy Johnson? Who is Jimmy Johnson? I like this question. He's a comedian I met at a stand-up bar last night. Yeah, despite all the rumors, Jimmy really is a nice guy. <laughs> this is Jimmy. This park, if it wasn't named Narrows, it should be named the Johnson Park. Who is Richie? Well, he's half, half, of, half of the uh, 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 soul of the park. Jimmy's the other half of the soul of the park. Uh, they're just, they're like, just totally driven and dedicated. And happy when people come down and respect what we have in, in the park. Jimmy Johnson is a modern day naturalist. That's who Jimmy Johnson is, a modern day naturalist. One of the reasons that I wanted to do the garden was to have it a destination. I wanted a destination for people in the community to come to. A garden is usually a place of relaxation, a place, a place of contemplation, a place of enjoyment. And a lot of people get that down here. It provides a social outlet. If you have friends coming over, you can take a walk through the botanical gardens. It's a little feather in their cap. Would you like to see, we have a botanical, what, you have a botanical garden, you know? It provides respite if people, many people have said you know, have said you have no idea how comforting this is for me. This happened or that happened. After 9-11, people came down here. They were very, this was an area that they could be quiet in and enjoy. A lot of people who died in 9-11 were working class people. So a lot of people from Bay Ridge was, were killed. My nephew, my sister's youngest son, was also killed. He was a fireman. And he was there saving people. And um, my family was shattered during that. With, with my nephew's death. It was very, very difficult for us, and um, we had a lot of problems uh, with, you know, just a lot of pain. A lot of pain was associated, unfortunately. And dying, a tragedy for different people are different things. For myself, I wanted to retreat and, and have that private. And, oh my God, you know, you can't, with not, when someone is killed in 9-11, all of our hearts are broke. I understand that, but you just, you, 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 you just didn't want to publicly grieve that, you know. My sister said it was like, it was like mourning Jeff in a circus. I had a Zen garden that I designed that I had the Twin Towers in. I just, I, I, have two, I had two stones that were representing the Twin Towers. So I made the Zen garden a memorial to 9-11, a subtle memorial. There were memorials popping up like corn stalks, you know, it was all over the place. It, it, it got over the top. So ours was kind of low key. It's, it's much the same uh, for everybody who comes here as it is for me. It's to see the beautiful flowers, the trees, to, you know, enjoy nature. Get away from, you know, the concrete jungle that we all pretty much live in most of the week. It allows people to get outside and to just relax and it's also a great uh, way to socialize and it's just a great way to be outdoors. It's just a little taste of what, what's out there. I got involved in the gardens when I moved to Bay Ridge because I moved into an apartment building and I dearly missed my backyards that I used to plant in and enjoy. It's a public area but you're doing it as much for the public as you are for your own soul.
One of the best things I love about it is sharing it with the children. It's always inspiring to see through their eyes what they see and how they see it. Well, he's a turtle. See him coming up? I had a dog named Zoe, I had a standard poodle, and she was extremely friendly. And many times, um, standard poodles are a little bit standoffish. They're like, they're great with you, but they don't want to talk to anyone else. Zoe was, where's the party? She was great. And uh, this was a neglected, empty area with a lot of weed grass, a couple of large trees, and the highway that you can hear now sometimes, but you could see it. It was mugwort, weed infested. People were afraid to walk in here. I would walk her over here, and a couple of people were cleaning up, and, and they had dogs, and the three of us were cleaning and doing things in the garden here, and then we started to get together and say, hey, we can make this a community garden, we can start this, and that's how it started to grow. He came down, and he says, I want to show you something, and he came down to show me this project, which was pretty ambitious, that he was working on with another volunteer, a fellow dog walker, and uh, I got it, I saw his vision, and it was like, what can I do to help? The commissioner at the time was Julius Spiegel, and he trusted me. He trusted that what we were doing down here was good, and he trusted what we were doing was um, influential and going to change things. And the community at large, it's a healthy community, and the people that live here like living here. So they'll watch out for the water lily pond, they'll yell the kids in it, they'll give me a call if they see something going on. We have a board that, that helps us out, but specifically the nuts and bolts are Linda Dahl and Richard Hoglin and myself. If the three of us were in a car accident, this would cease to exist. That's our biggest fear, is that if we, uh, we left or for some reason couldn't continue, that it would fall in disrepair. So we're really trying to get more people into this. We're trying to get this into um, a huge group so that we're not so, pre you know, so we're not so important. Marty and I are pushing this log, and then that log, you know, we've got it in place, but Marty kind of rolled a little bit, and I remember, I remember, because you fell, and I kind of looked, and I'm like, who is he? <laughs> so, but I'm just saying, that's where Marty and I connect. Yeah. When we were in here pushing stuff around and pulling weeds. Yeah. There was no ambitions here. Marty was helping. Right. You know, yeah. Marty was yeah. cleaning up Bay Ridge. He was, he was nuts. Yeah. He still is. So these are all females. So there are male bees, and the only thing the male bees do is eat and fly up in the sky and wait maybe to mate with a, feet, with a queen. That's the way life should be. No, no, no. His <laughs> penis is ripped off. And he oh, no! A couple of, I just want to mention a couple of, uh, a couple of other things that's happened in the garden that we kept very low key at that I'll tell now that a lot of people don't know. Um, a, a beautiful young girl um, hung herself in, in the native plant garden. She hopped the fence and um, I found her in the morning. She had killed herself. A young Russian girl. It was very, very tragic and sad, but we kept it very low key. Um, basically because we didn't want it to be the garden where the girl can, because that becomes sensationalized and not the tragedy and sadness that it is, but an ooh, where did it happen thing. So I actually had some Irish girlfriends of mine light sage and say prayers like we were druids from Ireland and um, to kind of sanctify the place again, you know, but that was very, very sad for many months that, you know, in the middle of the native plant garden, um, work area, this woman had taken her life, this young girl, beautiful, so sad. And on the bench in the center of the garden, a guy shot his head off in, in uh, desperation, upsetment with his girlfriend. Now, people have also proposed in the garden and asked to, you know, asked their, their brides, asked to be, you know, so that, you know, that's been wonderful. I'm sure people have probably fornicated I don't know if any children have come of that, but it would be interesting to have a Narrows botanical baby. We might, maybe we'll put an email out there. Has anyone copulated in the garden and can trace their pregnancy to Narrows botanical? We'd just like to know. My plans for this garden is that it becomes a, it becomes a conservancy. And um, an old person in Bay Ridge who has no family or hates their family dies and give us about a million dollars or so from their house, which is actually possible, or we get a big donation from someone and the garden can sustain itself. It'll, have, it'll be opened and closed, it'll have hours, maybe we'll even charge for it, I don't know. 
but it would be, I would like us to move in that direction. What I'd like to build is a media-based experience on horticulture and nature and horticulture in an urban environment like New York and how important it is. It's precious. The native plant garden in here is absolutely precious. People come in here and walk through with their children. They are so removed from nature, Zach, you would swear to God that they were on the moon. That's how removed New Yorker, a lot of New Yorkers are from um, nature. Plant people in nature, these little tiny on the side freaks. We're talking about the Kardashians. Who gives a shit about the Kardashians? In 30 years, there'll be some stupid documentary about, oh, wow, he was so talented, but he was living hand to mouth, but he was so talented.